You're listening to JTE Movie Thinks. Is that is that the title? Is that is that correct grammar? All right, we'll go with it. It's a show about movies and thinking. And now here's your host, Every Man's Hero, JTE. Hey everybody, what is going on? JT here, back with a brand new episode of JTE Movie Thinks. Uh, you know the deal. I never know what movie I'm going to be talking about. And today I got a really exciting guest. You know him from the Marvel show, Mr. Matt Cook. Welcome. Thanks for having me, man. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about this, too. Um, so, Matt, let's talk about I met you first because you started doing the Marvel show. That's right. And I remember saying to myself, this guy is hilarious. Oh. So funny. Spend and some I, more time with me. Spend some more time with it me? It wears thin. I, oh, see, I thought you were going to say you got funnier. No, no. No, <laughs> just his recycled jokes. Just, just. And you're like, oh, he's just loud. <laughs> That's his trick. Because <laughs> I see you once a week. It's just a yeah, perfect it's amount of that It's cook. enough, yeah. Okay. Um, all right, man. So the way this show works, I've told you this. I don't know going in what movie I'm going to talk about. Uh, basically, I leave it up to my guests. Uh, and I tell them, it could be whether the last time you were in a plane. I don't know if you travel a lot. I do. You do. Okay, so maybe some movie on a plane. Maybe you're at home and you just threw Netflix on. Something new came on that you wanted to watch. Maybe it's something your girlfriend made you watch. Whatever it might be the case. Maybe it's something you saw in a theater recently that you really want to talk about. What is the last movie you watched? The last movie I watched was At Home. Hit me. I can't wait to hear this. Edge of Tomorrow. Really? Oh, yes. wow. Okay. Yeah. Holy cow. So this is a pretty recent film. Yeah. I hadn't seen it, and now it's available on HBO, and I've been dying to see it because everybody's been flipping out about it. Yeah. And I watched it. You are the first person on my show to have a film that actually came out within a year. Really? Yeah. A lot of people, like I've had stuff like Dave and like Avengers, yeah. stuff that's come out Fairly, you know, a few years ago, or maybe something as old as The Fair to Remember, yeah. which Alicia Malone did, which is like from 1950 something. This is the most current film I've got to talk about so far, and I'm glad because I have a lot to say about this movie. Oh, really? <laughs> Good. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this. First of all, what was your expectations for the movie before you watched it and you heard all the hype? So, taking in like, consideration when you the first hype, saw the I mean, trailer. it was so hyped. Oh, when I saw the trailer, I. Uh, I was like, God, Emily Blunt's really pretty. And she looks <laughs> okay. like she could knock my head off. Okay. Um, but I thought it looked really cool. I, I didn't really expect much of it. I thought it was going to be another kind of like mm-hmm. half-baked sci-fi epic and there'd be, you know, things. I thought the monsters in the trailer looked like the the, uh, the things from the Matrix, the squids. Yes. You know, yeah, like it was sort of very that. similar to that, which uh-huh. I wasn't really crazy about. Um live, die, repeat, or whatever the tag was. <laughs> that, I was yeah. like, okay. like. What I'm is like, your relationship with Tom Cruise? I love Tom Cruise. Okay, so you're a big uh, Tom Cruise fan. I, yeah, I actually, I like watching him. I think he does a great job. Mm-hmm. I watched Jack Reacher yep. um, just on a whim. Somebody said it was good, and I really liked it. Uh, it felt like an old, like, 70s, like, Steve McQueen mm-hmm. cop drama. Like, I thought it was really cool. He's a movie star, man. He's yeah. easy to watch. He knows what he's doing. He's so you're able to divorce yourself from, like, remember when he was going through that whole crazy period? Yeah. Where people were just like, they couldn't buy him because of all the antics? Yeah. That never affected me. I was able to go watch his movies and enjoy it. Me too. You felt the same way? Yeah. I felt like he's meant to be on the screen. Mm-hmm. And I think with all, like, the couch jumping and stuff, it's like, let's pull back a little bit from that side of it. And, like, let's just focus on him. On the, uh, he's an actor. He's a movie star. Yeah. Now, a I lot mean, of people complained because Oblivion came out a year before. Yeah. Did you see that? I did. Did you enjoy it? I did. Okay. See, a lot of people didn't like that movie. And when they saw Edge of Tomorrow, a lot of people, for, for some reason, this is not me, were comparing it to Oblivion. Which is a weird thing to do. Yeah. I know they're both sci-fi movies, but the trailers are totally different. To me, they were totally different films. Oblivion felt more like Moon, the movie Moon yes, with definitely. Sam Rockwell, which I love, yep. and uh, the video game series Mass Effect. Like, there oh, okay. was so much taken, like, so visually it looked like Mass Effect. And also Elysium looked like, just like Mass Effect. It looked like the Citadel, all that That's stuff. That's true. Like, there's, and Mass Effect's one of my favorite video games ever. Okay, never played it. Uh, it's it's a trilogy. It's one of my favorite. Yeah, I heard it's, it's amazing. It's fantastic. And the art design and the world they created is mm-hmm. it's one of the best sci-fi stories I've ever played. So I'm a big sci-fi okay. nut. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Um, I love that stuff. Uh, and I really enjoyed Edge of Tomorrow. I liked Oblivion, fine, but yeah. there were certain things that I could. There were parallels to other things that I couldn't get past. Now, Whereas with Edge of Tomorrow, I didn't mind any parallels that I came across. Oblivion's kind of known for being a big box office failure this yeah. past year, and a lot of people said it's because of Tom Cruise's star power, which I, makes hard sense to me because Ghost Protocol made a crap load of money. Yeah. Again, yes, that's a franchise, and it was established, but I saw the trailer. And while I heard a lot of negativity around it, I thought the trailer was awesome. For Ghost Protocol? For Edge of Tomorrow. 
Edge tomorrow, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, like, that's why I was like, I don't understand why everyone was kind of giving it this, uh, I don't know, kind of was like Oblivion. I was like, dude, that trailer is way better than Oblivion. I think, just in general, and this is, sounds stupid, but I okay. think society is so eager to rip things down. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I think especially with the internet culture, it's like, Anytime something pops up, they're like, they want to be the first person to take a piss on it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I get that. And be like, I said the worst thing first, so click my like button. Listen to me be angry and all that, you mm -hmm. know? And I think um, with things like Edge of Tomorrow, I think when it's done really well, it, it bypasses that. Like, gotcha. there's always going to be negativity and there's always mm -hmm. going to be people that are like, especially somebody like Tom Cruise, who's everywhere. He's massive. There's no, oh, nobody else. He's, biggest he's, star in the world. Yeah, he's, he's massive. So people are going to be like, He's a weirdo. He's, you know, crazy. You know, people always try to knock people down and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think when you put out a good product and when you do a good job, that stuff falls away. And then all of a sudden it's, you know, a year later when the movie came out. This, this, like a year. It came out last summer, yeah. Yeah. So it's people now are like, it's the coolest. It's the best. Mm -hmm. And everybody loves it because it was great, you know, or I now, thought it was great. Let's talk about the plot a little bit. Um, I, I tell everybody this movie kind of reminds me, I mean, everyone says this, Groundhog Day. Yeah. But with an action sci-fi element to yeah, it. Yeah, which I'm sure is how it was pitched. Yeah, um, exactly. Tom Cruise. Yeah. Groundhog Day. <laughs> Science fiction. I would love to be in that pitch meeting. Like, do you guys like Groundhog Day? Yeah. Now imagine if Tom Cruise yeah. played Bill Murray's role. With an exosuit. <laughs> yeah, with an exosuit. So. Uh, man, I wish they, I hope they made like some sort of like um, animation, like early animation of yeah. what it would look like. I would love to see that pitch. Uh, so Doug Lyman's a director. This is a guy who started off in the indie. So he started with Swingers. That was like his wow. first film. Yeah. But his bigger films were like Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Okay. And he did the first Bourne film. Great. So this guy has a resume that backs up kind of the action genre. So I had some hope for it, even though I didn't love Mr. and Mrs. Smith. And I, I didn't did, either. I didn't like Jumper. I hated him. Jumper. Oh, he did Jumper. I hated Jumper. <laughs> Why yeah, because they Jumper? were selling Edge of Tomorrow from the guy who brought you Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Yeah, and, and I was like, no thanks. And Born, yeah. Yeah. Um, I hated Jumper. Yeah, okay. I hated it. Well, I didn't like it either. I, I saw it in theaters, but I have... Me too. It's one of those things where I watched it, and I two days later, I couldn't tell you half the things that happened. Me either. I don't remember. I just yeah. know I didn't like it. Was it was Nightcrawler without Nightcrawler. Exactly. <laughs> and at that point, it's yeah. like, mind your own business. Leave Nightcrawler alone. Like Now... The movie Edge of Tomorrow. I saw this at a very. I saw it at the premiere, but it was like L.A. New York premiere. So when I went to the theater, you sat in the theater for two hours before the movie started, Ooh. and they have they had a live feed from New York, where they showed Tom Cruise doing the red carpet and all this stuff. It was boring as hell. Yeah, that so sounds awful. It was horrible. But the actually movie started. I was like, okay, thank God, this movie's actually worth the wait because it was a very entertaining movie. Now I'm gonna say this right off the top. While a lot of people went crazy for this movie. I did not love it as much as most people I talked to. Okay. I had some issues with the movie. Great. <laughs> did you, I want to let's go through that first? Did you have any issues with the movie when you watched it? Um. Yeah, I mean, I did. I, I I really enjoyed it. Yeah. It didn't break my mind. Okay. It didn't change my life, but I really enjoyed it. I thought it looked really cool. Mm -hmm. I thought it was interesting where they spent more time. Yeah. And then where they spent less time and like there was a few like fun reveals, but like all of a sudden it was like, wait, how long has it been? How many days has he done they it? You know what really I mean? Like, give you that yeah, with sense. Groundhog's Day, you see a visual yeah. deterioration of, of Bill Murray. Mm -hmm. Like you see him falling apart and you know, like, oh, things are not going well. But with this, you never really got that. But I guess that's because he keeps he doesn't reset. The day keeps resetting in ground. So maybe that's maybe I just solved their problem for <laughs> you them. Said this movie didn't change your life. Yeah. I don't think it changed many people's life. No. I want to know what the person whose life was changed I know. was like. Yeah. Well, they haven't seen a movie since The Fair to Remember. <laughs> so they, it was, you know, they're like, whoa. I feel like they immediately signed up for Scientology after this movie. You think so? Were there <laughs> a lot of Scientology they, undertones? I feel like there could be, but maybe I'm not smart enough to pick them up. I'm certainly not. I feel like any time Tom Cruise is a sci-fi movie, there might be some... I know. That's, what, that's interesting, because I, I do yeah. have a hard time... I don't mind the couch jumping. I don't mind the yeah. stuff, but it's the Scientology stuff that I'm like, that stuff I, I have a hard time. I mean, you saw the video where he like gets an award. Have you seen this video? No. And it's like, it looks like he's like on the planet from mom and dad saved the world. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> he's like, Dude, in the <laughs> sewer monsters, those yeah. toadstools. Give yeah. me, like I still, I can't eat. If they're the most upsetting looking <laughs> evil penises I've ever seen. And that's including yeah. Prometheus. There's a scene where there's an online video on YouTube. Look it up. It's where he's winning an award for Scientology, and it, it it's some huge hall of people with these uniforms I've never seen before. It was like it's kind of like the last scene in Star Wars where 
Chewbacca. See, that's that's Han how they Solo. need to sell it. That's how they need to sell Scientology. Because I'd be like, yeah, dude, yeah. sign me up. Here's my money. Sign me up for that. Get me into the rebellions, <laughs> Yavin Five base, and let me let me get those awards, dude. And uh, Chewbacca yelling at me to applaud or turn or whatever it is. Now let me say one thing. Um, Did you see the video of Tom Cruise electric doing Electricity? Emperor Palpatine? Yes. So, oh, that's the best. Uh, that's Oprah? the only video I ever really need. That's amazing. Uh, I want that Ender cut into Star Wars. That'd be great. Oh, Maybe yeah. Lucas would do that with the next editions. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing I will say, I want to just point out some problems with the movie before we praise it some more. Great. Um, the end of the movie, he teams up. I'm not without giving away exactly what's the ending. Yeah. But he teams up with these Marines that he meets in the first day. And he starts, he goes through this point, which reminds me of Groundhog Day, where he's like, you're from so-and-so, you're from this, I know that you, you know, have a fear of this. And I thought to myself, wow, I really, throughout the movie, never had a chance to see him interact with these Marines. Yeah. So when they do this last mission, and the Marines' lives are in danger, I felt no, I felt Connection nothing, to the team. Felt connection to the team. And why would they feel connected to him? Yeah, exactly. And why is that the day that it works, and yeah. all that? Yeah, I mean, there was definitely... Because he's not introduced to those people yeah. in a nice way. He's uh, brought in as yeah. uh, uh, as a bad thing, and they don't like him. So why? When how does he, he become, get out these personal yes, information? Yes, when unless he, become, he focused on each person for like. But they many never days show that. I know. So when he started saying that stuff, I was like, "When did this happen?" Yeah, I was like, "Show us, show us, show me a day or two where he's going through this rough time where he just he's not even bothering with the mission. Yeah, he's just getting to know these people." Because I feel like with all the way he was training and everything, I, I just can't picture when that actually happened. Yeah, the timeline there gets really, really murky. Messy. And um, big mistake, by the way, not having Bill Paxton go on the last mission with him. Right? You're in a movie that almost looks like aliens anyway. Yeah. Put Bill Paxton in that last action Get scene with gone. the rest of the Marines. Let him do something other than... Two Walk. words. Game over. Yeah. He would have said that at any point in this movie. The audience would have, I would have erupted. I would have put another star on this movie. For sure. Immediately. Um, yeah, so that was the problem I had with the movie was that one aspect. One of my big problems was the aliens themselves. Thank you. That's where I was going next. Which was so kind of like brushed over and like mm -hmm. quickly done and whatever. And like I, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a jerk when I watch a movie. Like because if you give me a simple reason mm -hmm. for anything, I'm like, I'm on your side. Great. Whatever. But as soon as something gets a little iffy, I'm like. How dare you? And I'm like very, you know, like I'm easy to please until you yeah. do something that doesn't make sense, you know? Okay. And so I don't understand how these things land well, it's all and then have the control montage. over time. Yeah. But the actual, like, the, the, the biological abilities of these aliens, I don't understand. Yeah. Like, well, clearly they're aliens, so why would I? I shouldn't have to. <sighs> but does it affect, do they root into the planet? Do they affect yeah. the time of the planet? Or is it, a, is it... How how far out does their time go. manipulation abilities reach? That's a good point. And does it go? Is it for the planet? Is it for the continent? Is it for the solar system? Yeah, is it for? Really is that. it universal? You know what I mean? Like these things are all powerful. Like it doesn't. I don't know. I don't know how they. Yeah, and there's that one scientist that they go to who uh, Emily Blunt was friends yeah. with, and he actually knows some stuff. Yeah. How amazing would it have been if they got Christopher Lloyd just for that role? Oh my god! <laughs> just like. We have to like, yeah. just break it down science. Yeah. That would have been a very Prana 3D. They found me. That I don't probably would have They found me. Yeah. Um, but I agree with you. Like, a lot of that wasn't built up. For me, when I see an alien evasion film, I love the build up to the aliens. Yeah. I hate, I mean, a lot of movies have done this where it's like they just do a montage in the beginning because they want to get you right into it. Yeah. My favorite part is like the aliens, like, hiding behind the moon like yeah. Independence Day and just like kind of slowly creeping in and I like the reveal of humanity like War of the Worlds the Spielberg film with Tom Cruise yeah I love just the my favorite part of that movie I don't love the movie I didn't but I, I love the love whole coming out of the ground you know the reaction of people what's happening right and for this movie to start where you're just already in towards the end of the war right uh, I understand why they did it but I would have liked I don't care if the movie's actually half hour long give me the actual you know emergence of these things yeah. and the whole time thing coming to play. Yeah, there was some, it definitely feels like some things were focused on more than others. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like there was some more time spent in sort of flat areas uh, excitement wise. Yeah. And then some things that I think are, are big information pieces weren't really hit upon. And, and I kind of like that. I kind of like the idea of, uh, I like the, I guess the, the mindset of trusting your audience mm -hmm. being like you fill in the blanks. And I think that's something the Avengers did really well where yeah. it's like, 
we're just going to give you what you need and we're going to make it all awesome. And I think that's like, you know, one of the honest yeah. trailers are like, how are they talking? Yeah. Devices? It's like, well, they're a shield. They have little, like who cares? Yeah. Like yeah. they're talking and it's awesome. And that's like, so I, minimal. Yeah. Like I don't care yeah. about that stuff because they do everything else right. And you exactly. get all the other information. I also thought, I mean, speaking of Independence Day, which I love, mm -hmm. uh, I watched that movie on VHS <laughs> okay. like every day yeah. after school. Oh, okay. I'd get home and just be like, put it on again. Um, did you see it in theaters? Yeah, I did. Yeah, okay. And they had the big, um, they had the big cardboard setup when you walked into the movie theater. Oh, really? The movie theater I saw it in is now actually like a paint store or something. Like I saw it in such a weird <laughs> oh little movie theater. Uh, I had the opposite. I was on vacation with my family that year. We went to Disney World. Wow. And we were in Orlando, and we went to one of the huge theaters they had there. Yeah. And we saw it there, and I remember just being like, How can you even? Yeah, it's our insane. My brain exploded. <laughs> um. I love that in that movie, I hadn't seen those aliens before. Yes. Like, that was a new and creature. Practical. And it had an exo suit in the practical, and it mm -hmm. looked amazing. And I do almost, almost once a week, I go to people and I go, peace. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, just for fun, like, I'll hold my own throat and be like, peace. No peace. You know, is this glass bulletproof? No, sir. Oh, bang, bang, yeah. bang. Um, but they were awesome looking and they were threatening and yes. they were like very alien. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they were very clearly a different physicality. I thought Edge of Tomorrow's monsters were a little generic. And again, they had certain yeah. elements from a lot of different different uh, the, properties. And the stuff. way they moved, I almost didn't, it didn't look natural, which I guess what they were going for. Right. But I don't know. Some of the bad, I just did not really dig. I feel like aliens in general designs are just lazy nowadays. Yeah. Uh, Cowboys versus aliens. Yes. Not a bad movie, not a good no. movie. <laughs> uh, but the aliens look so generic. It's almost like any video game you would pop in. Yep. Uh, they almost look like smaller versions of the monster from Cloverfield. Which yes. I didn't like that alien I, monster either. I didn't like that movie. I didn't like it either. Um, Rama with you on that one. And I, I love, like, I think Independence Day had great aliens. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the last time I've seen a great alien slash kind of monster. Like, these were I okay. Do. What was the last great one? Uh, the video game Evolve. Okay, well, that's different, though. A different though. property. But oh, my game. point is, it can be done. Yeah. And they're very cool. And there's elements in those. Like, there's three different monsters. The mm -hmm. game just launched this week. There's three different monsters that are all very different physicalities, very mm -hmm. different powers, all this other stuff. And they look awesome. And they look threatening. And they look alien. Like, Do you remember the movie Fire in the Sky? Uh, yeah, but I've only seen parts of it because okay. it scared me. It scared like, the hell out of me. Those aliens, which are actually, like, people, like, puppeteers or something, yeah. scare me ten times more than... Any of these aliens I'm seeing that are just CGI effects. Yeah. Another movie. Even Close Encounters of the Third Kind, which are not really supposed to be scary. Never Still seen it. Freak me the hell out. Yeah. The little people with big eyes and heads. Just something tangible for me is still so much better than I think than that's just CG. movie making in general. Like, it's lazy. And, and CG gets so dated so fast. Yeah. And it just never, like, give me a puppet. And I think that's where Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. really succeeded is there were yeah. so many practical makeup aliens. And they looked amazing. Watch the first Alien movie by Ridley Scott. Okay. And then watch Alien 3 where they use CGI for the alien. It is horrible. Yeah. Alien will not age because it's all practical. Yeah. And that's just, yeah. So anyway, back to tomorrow. Yeah. The aliens, I'm not, they're fine. I didn't love they're them. They're fine. Yeah, they're fine. But all of this said, all of this stuff that I didn't really enjoy, I still had a blast watching the movie. And I yeah. think that speaks. We're talking a lot of bad stuff, but yeah. it's a very enjoyable film. I think Tom, uh, Tom Cruise was great in it. And yep. again, I'm always like, I, I'm always on his side, but I'm always hesitant. But every time I watch him, I always enjoy him. I and always enjoy his work. Different to see him play a kind of a coward who doesn't have yeah. any skills. I loved that. And to see him kind of become this hero, yep. which is totally different for him. And Emily Blunt, I thought, did a really good job. She was amazing. I got some heat for this when the movie first came out. Oh, and no. I'm going to ask you the same question. I don't want any heat. <laughs> this is... We'll see. It's hot enough in Los <laughs> Angeles, should say. Uh, that was just a segue, so we talk about the movie The Heat with Sandra Bullock. Great. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, I'm not first saw the movie. I said to these people, what if Tom Cruise was Emily Blunt's role and Emily Blunt was the lead character? That'd be great. Mind blown? Yeah, that'd be great. Because <laughs> here's the thing. She's like this hero who's like this. She's already this legend. So if Tom Cruise was playing her role, it would be Tom Cruise, who we know Tom Cruise as, this guy... Who's but just I like think a legendary warrior. And I think that's why it's not that. You know what I mean? Like I think like you're saying, like I like that he's that he that he plays kind yeah. of a dirtbag in the beginning of the film. Like Yeah. No, I understand that, but I just feel I think Emily Blunt's such a good actress. Yeah. And I thought she was so good in this. For me, I think it would just have been a little more interesting if she was the one throwing a battle. Because maybe, you know, she's a girl, yeah. she's like, because you know, not a lot of girls' imagery. She's like, whoa, 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 I'm not supposed to do this. And then she had to learn to become this warrior. 
from this guy who's almost ready, the Ultimate Warrior. The Ultimate Warrior. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tom Cruise. I understand the movie works just as it is. For sure. But part of me is my mind is just like, man, how I. I, I mean, agree. I I, I would have loved to have seen that just because I think she's fantastic. I yeah. always I I love her work and I think especially in this movie she was so good. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have loved to have seen her have more to do. And I was thinking when I was watching it, it's interesting because she had such a different job as an actor than Tom Cruise did. Yeah. Where she only needed to know one day. That's true. You know yeah. what I mean? And he had to work his whole evolution of time. How That's I'm true. sure he knows and he talked with the filmmaker how much time so, he yeah. spent. Yeah. Alright, so basically Tom Cruise is yeah, he had to do a whole thing of like he had so many different uh forms of his character that he mm-hmm. had to play. Which I think is interesting, and I think he did a great job doing it. And the guy that we meet at the beginning of the film is very different than the man that we see at the end of the film. Um, and his evolution in between that, there's a lot of different stages that he hits. There is the one scene where he's like, I don't want to do this, and he leaves, and he goes to get a drink. Or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, There yeah. are like there brief moments scene. of like different things yeah. and different people and different, different uh, reactions that he's having to the situation that he's in. I wish it was a little clearer mm-hmm. how many times, how often he, he had died well, and failed or what his different tactics were. And speaking of that, did you buy the relationship? The kind of, I felt like the romance at the last third of the film felt a little forced. I didn't feel right. like, it, I didn't feel it throughout the film. So when it happened, I was kind of like, really? Well, I feel it, like they just did that because it's a movie. Yeah. And it, it like, kinda, it kind of bordered like a little like, uh, like time and space, like roofing, you know what I mean? Like okay. he was able to be like, yeah. well, what's your favorite color? And then bang, he's dead. And he's Gr- like, oh, what, what shade of blue is they your favorite color? Groundhog Day, exactly. but it was more, it and, more but, sense. And it, and it didn't really work out for him in Groundhog's yeah. Day. And he had the, like, the con- uh, uh, yeah. uh, conflict, uh, you know, he, he was, felt bad about himself and all that. Uh, where this, he was, you know, pursuing her. But I yeah. get it. I but mean, how do you not? that was the storyline of Groundhog Day, exactly. basically. Exactly. This is like, it was a side thing that never really got developed. Right. So when it did happen, I was just kind of like. It felt a little put on. Why would she buy it? The rest of Like, the I stuff. understand why he would fall in love with her. Yeah. But why would she fall in love with him after Instantly. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's, again, it's one of those things I didn't mind. Mm-hmm. Like, all of it, I was like, cool, I'm with you. Like, I think they did so mo- so many things so well that I was like, I'm really excited about this. I'm having a good time. Uh, cool. Yeah, let's see them get together because I like both of them very much and, yeah. and whatever. And, and then the fact that it wasn't easy, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And it didn't necessarily go as planned and all that stuff I thought was really cool. And I think, too, the way they set it up with her character being also. so alone. Okay. It's only the scientist and her that have any idea yeah. what's happening. And then all of a sudden this dude comes in and she's like, thank God I'm not alone. Yeah. So I think there's this, there's there's a human thing there where it's like she has someone that she can talk to. And I, yeah. I think that's the real selling point for her that's character true. calling for his character is they share something that no one else on the planet shares and they're against unimaginable odds and all that stuff. Yeah. I think it's, you know, it's the end of speed. You know what I mean? Like they say, <laughs> the speed? Yeah, 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 relationships based on stressful situations don't work out or whatever. Yeah. It's that thing. You've gone through something together. You have something to show. It's a good point. <laughs> you know, like I said, this movie is a lot of fun. Yes. Um, I was not blown away by the movie. It did not make a top 10 of the year, even though it made a lot of my friends top 10 year. Uh-huh. Year. Uh, I tell everyone who wants to see it, you you might enjoy it more than I did. I thought it was a very entertaining film. But for me, did you see Snowpiercer? Yeah. That was like one of my favorite sci-fi kind of movies of the year. I hated it. No! I no. hated Snowpiercer. <laughs> no, Matt Cook. Dude, I hated it so much. Why? Because the whole thing was <laughs> okay. a mess. It was a sloppy mess. They had some cool ideas. <laughs> when those dude with the hatchets and fish came yeah. out with no eyes, I was like, nobody knows what's going on. <laughs> For the first hour of the movie, I was like, they're finally going to tell me what they've been doing. This is all leading towards something. It's all very intense, you know, whatever. They're, they're going to have a... I, have you seen it? No. Okay. That's, <laughs> we have a friend in the room. Yeah. Mystery man. Uh, uh, all of it... Court ordered. Th- th- Chris Evans spending the whole movie going, I'm not a leader. Follow me. I'm like, you're right. Come on, man. Like, you can't, you, you know, can't be man. saying I'm not a leader that many times while you're leading everybody. You know what we'll do? Maybe I will watch, rewatch it again. We will do another podcast. I would love to talk will, to you about Snowpiercer. We will do a let's whole, watch it together. Let's do a whole Snowpiercer right. episode, right? I hated it. I loved it. I hated Those it. Are my top that 10 old of the year, fat man. man with the bad hair that nobody knows his name, and I guess his lover gets killed, and he's on a prevent, and he can't die. He keeps coming back to life and killing everybody else. And then, oh, Ear mitts. Uh, uh, the end of it, hey, spoiler alert, the little kid, they put that big jacket on the little kid 
Yeah. And then, All right, no, no, I'm going to cut you off right here because I want to save it for next time. I don't oh, to man. But listen. I hated it. I love that movie. It I hated it. Of the year. And we what both, was your top movie? Number one was Selma. Haven't seen it. Okay, great movie. Number two was Whiplash. Haven't seen it. Number three, I think it was X-Men Days of Future Pass. Uh, I loved it. I enjoyed it. Okay. I really liked it. And then I, t- okay. I talked about it on the Marvel I know, show. I know, you, you... My buddy was like, Wolverine was a yeah. tour guide. And I was like, oh, you're right. He only stabbed two fat Actually, men and Kitty Pride. I'm trying to think. Maybe it was number four. I'm trying to think what number three was. I think it was X-Men. I think number four was Life Itself, which is a great documentary about Ebert. But yeah, we'll get into it. I love Snowpiercer. I think I it's the better it. film over Edge of Tomorrow. No! No! That scene where they're going around the bend and they're shooting submachine guns oh, out windows and they're amazing. getting headshots? That's absurd. It's amazing. They're going, the train is moving, all they're aiming straight. That doesn't make any there was no physics in that movie. <laughs> and all of that technology okay, that's a whole different thing. Edge of tomorrow. Come on, Edge, Edge of tomorrow. Edge of tomorrow, whatever. Edge of tomorrow it was like this. Here's the thing, this is what's happening. All of Snowpiercer is like, what's happening? This doesn't make any sense. I disagree. Oh, I hated it. <laughs> I disagree. Dude, I was so on board for Snowpiercer. And then until those people with the fish showed up, I was like, okay, it's official. You, the, Nobody knows what's happening in this movie. We will have this discussion on a future episode of JT Movie Thinks. Matt Cook, thank you very much for uh, coming on and talking. To Thanks you. for Mark, having me, man. Tell me, tell the people where they can find you. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Matt Cook Tweeted. Okay. Uh, check it out. All right. You can find me at Schmoes JTE. Uh, do me a favor if you're listening to this on iTunes and you feel like I gave you a five-star podcast, give me a five-star rating. I think we did a pretty good job here. I loved it. <laughs> we tore we tore Edge of Tomorrow down a little bit. You know, I still I really playing. enjoyed it. Yeah. You, I liked I, it more than you here's did. Here's the thing. Here's, here's, let me just say this. I really like the movie, but I hear nothing but praise from everybody. I'm glad I was able to give out some of my grievances. With yeah, you. it wasn't a perfect it's not film, a perfect but it was really fun. It was really fun. Not as fun as Snowpiercer. And those actors are great. Snowpiercer. Not as fun as Snowpiercer, but very good. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks a lot for listening to another episode of JT Movie Thinks. We will catch you on the next episode.